In this video, we will be going over spoke tension, why it's important, how to measure it, and also how to adjust it. Spoke tension is the amount of pulling force being exerted along a spoke. It is typically measured and called out by component companies in kilograms of force or in newtons. When truing or dishing a wheel, the mechanic is making adjustments that affect spoke tension. Good wheel tension is not just about an individual spoke though. It's about the consistency of all the spokes coming together and creating a nice rigid structure. So why is spoke tension important? Well, without it, things would tend to fall apart. When you're out for a ride, your wheel flattens slightly where it meets the ground. As this happens, the spokes at the bottom of the wheel lose some tension. This cycle of gaining and losing tension happens throughout the entirety of your ride. If a wheel's tension is too low, it can cause the spokes to relax too much during a ride, creating a snapping effect and causing excess stress to both the spokes and the rim. This can lead to detensioning, which is when spokes lose tension over a short amount of time. This leads to breaking spokes, rim fatigue, and a not so durable wheel that will go out of true more often. At the other extreme, too high of spoke tension can cause cracks in the rims, broken spokes, or even damaged hubs. Before we get to measuring tension, we should really figure out what our tension should be. Consulting with your rim manufacturer's website is a great place to start. Most rims have suggested ranges from about 100 to 120 kgf. This is assuming there is no pressure in the tire. As for measuring spoke tension, one method is to squeeze the spokes. Though not foolproof, squeezing spokes from a wheel you know to have good tension is a way to get a sense of what acceptable tension is. Squeezing is a more accurate way of measuring spoke tension than, say, perceived effort when turning a spoke nipple. Like any fastener, the nipple will tend to become more difficult to turn as tension increases. But this doesn't always mean that the tension is too high. It could have corrosion or just be at the end of the threads. The best way to measure spoke tension is with a spoke tension meter, like the ParkTool TM1. Spoke tension meters flex a spoke between two posts with a calibrated spring. This deflection is shown on the meter's scale. To accurately use the ParkTool TM1, you're going to need to know the diameter of the spoke and also the material of the spoke. This spoke is a round steel spoke. The diameter in the middle of the spoke is 1.8 millimeters. When using the TM1, make sure to place the two fixed posts on the narrowest parts of the spoke or in the middle of the spoke. This steel spoke is giving us a reading of 15. Looking at the TM1 chart, we find the steel round spoke section and scroll over to our spoke's diameter. 1.8 millimeters. With our TM1 reading of 15, that places the tension of our steel round spoke right at 58 kgf. This rims manufacturer calls out a max tension of 110 kgf. We are going to set a tension goal for this wheel of 100 kgf on average, which for our spokes is a reading between 20 and 21 on the TM1. Continue on by checking one entire side of the wheel before making any tension adjustments. Write down your results or input them into the wheel tension app at parktool.com forward slash WTA. When we check the left side of this rear wheel, we notice that these readings are lower than the right side. This is due to the fact that the spokes come out of the hub at different angles. The angle that a spoke leaves the hub is often referred to as the bracing angle. When the spoke has more angle, that means that it has more mechanical advantage and will need less tension to counter the opposing side if the opposing side has less of a bracing angle. This is seen on rear wheels and front wheels with a rotor. Your tension goal applies to the side with more tension. The opposing side will simply have lower tension when your dish or centering is correct. Armed with the knowledge of our wheel's current tension, we can start to make changes. When adjusting spoke tension, it can really help to have something to hold your wheel while you work. The Park Tool Truing Stand is a fantastic option. You'll also need a properly sized spoke wrench to turn the nipple at the end of the spoke. There are many different sizes and even shapes for spoke nipples, 
which we cover in this article on spoke wrench selection at parktool.com. When adjusting a wheel's tension, our number one goal is consistent spoke tension, or what we call good relative tension. On this wheel, we measured, and they were a little bit inconsistent from spoke to spoke, but overall, they were a little on the low side. To correct this wheel, we want to raise its overall tension. Since this is a rear wheel with different bracing angles on each side of the hub, increasing tension may change the dish slightly. With that in mind, let's give the spokes on the drive side one quarter turn each, and those on the non-drive side one eighth of a turn to start. Now that we have gone around the entire wheel, let's check what our work has done. We'll measure with the TM1 and plug our data into the WTA at parktool.com. We've increased the right side tension on average by 25 kgf, but we have a bit further to go, so let's repeat the quarter turn on the right and eighth turn on the left. After these adjustments, we can see our tensions have gotten closer to one another, and our relative tension is very close to our target of 100 kgf. If when measuring your wheel's relative tension, you find that the tensions are too high, you're gonna to need to bring those tensions back down. The process of reducing tension is very similar to increasing tension. You'll just be turning the spoke nipple the opposite direction. The tension of this wheel is too high by about 30 kgf. Because this is a front wheel with equal bracing angles on the left and the right side, loosen each spoke by one quarter turn. When spoke tensions are this tight, a quarter of a turn will lower spoke tension quite a lot. Go around the entire wheel like this, and then recheck your tensions. Using our TM1, we can see that our tensions are already down to 120 kgf. You may notice when taking readings that there's some fluctuations in the spoke tension on one side. If the tension fluctuates widely, your wheel may benefit from tension balancing. Tension balancing is when you increase one spoke's tension or decrease another spoke's tension to get the relative tension to be the same. A well-balanced wheel is gonna stay true for longer and increase the life of your spokes. A wheel with spokes that are within plus or minus 20% of the wheel's average spoke tension is generally considered to have acceptable relative tension. You will have outliers, however. When addressing these spokes, think about how tightening or loosening them will affect the trueness and dish of the wheel. Here, I will loosen this spoke and tighten this other to keep the relative tension the same. We call this the zone of influence. The zone of influence, tension balancing, and more is covered in detail in our WTA video. So how do we know when our wheel is properly tensioned? Well, if your wheel has good lateral true, good radial true, is properly dished or centered, and your tension on the, on the high tension side of your wheel is up to manufacture spec, that's a good place to start thinking about stopping. You can keep on fine tuning your wheel to finer and finer tolerances, but you don't have to have a perfect wheel to enjoy the ride. So that's the basic process for how to check and adjust your wheel spoke tension. For other great videos on wheel truing, check out our wheel truing playlist, where you're gonna find videos on lateral truing, radial truing, wheel centering and dishing, as well as how a wheel works. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you learned something and we'll see you next time.